Hiya folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and if you're anything like me, then you're a big fan of Doctor Strange, but you're also a little bummed out at just how alive he tends to be. Thankfully, at the end of the latest Multiverse of Madness trailer, we got a sneak peek at this little fella. So naturally, I wanted one of my own. As always, the first step is going to be building an armature, but not just any armature, a multi-armature. Once I've got my armature built, wrapped in wire, and posed in the best Billy Elliot leap pose that I can get, it's time to start bulking out the body. And once I've got the body bulked out, I'll give it all a quick smoothing and then I can get to adding the detail. I'll start by adding lots of little wormy dealies crisscrossing along the legs, which I'll then be able to blend into the pants, giving me Steve's trademark baggy yoga pants. I got a bit carried away as you'll see in the not too distant future and really leaned into the more traditional Doctor Strange outfit, which is why his leather boots end up being laced and wrapped in fabric, rather than the ironclad battle boots that our undead hero appears to be donning. However, the boots are the last piece of the lower body puzzle, which means I can add the bottom half of his fancy flowing wizard's robe. Now normally I would make something this thin and flimsy out of cosplay, since it's super flexible once it's baked but I sadly ran out of it and I was forced to make his flowy bits out of the firmer Super Sculpey that I had on hand. Otherwise, the bottom half is finished, which means it's time to make his head. I'll start by sizing up an appropriately sized ball of clay, then marking out where his eyes and mouth will sit. Then I'll stick a little nose in place, carve out the eye sockets and reshape the upper face before cutting away any of the excess clay. Now it's hard to tell from the trailer, but I imagine that the undead doctor we see at the end is the same character, just a little well-worn and bloated, so I'm trying to stick to the general facial shape of Benedict Cumberbatch. Most notably, he's got ridiculously sharp cheekbones, highlighting his long face. Now I'm not particularly good at making lifelike faces, and real-life character sketches are the bane of my existence. However, I'm gonna really lean into the dead and bloated look here, which should give me plenty of wiggle room. Also, to really highlight who this is, I'm gonna make sure to give him his Benedict Cumber stash. Otherwise, once I'm mostly happy with the head, it's on to the deadifying stage, which starts with sinking the eyes and adding some grisly gruesome cuts and gouges all over his face. And once it's been baked, to preserve the shape, I can stick it onto the body, blend it into the neck, and then get started on the rest of the upper body detail. I'll start by adding his Benedict Cumber sash before adding just a whole bunch of wormy dealies to his arms to build up his baggy shirt sleeves. Now Doctor Strange is all about the layering, so I flattened a bunch of thin strips of clay that I'll build up to make his various layered robes. Now I know that I said I didn't have any cosplay, but that's not entirely true. I just don't have much, and what I do have I wanted to save for the absolute multiverse of hands that I'm gonna have to make since snapping little fingers off halfway through the painting process fills me with a rage that I have trouble putting into words. What I do have, however, is bright white, so for the rest of the sculpting process, Steven is going to be wearing fancy white gloves. Otherwise, with the hands in place and blended into the forearm, the last little bit of detail will be adding the fabric straps that wrap around his bracers. Then it's into the oven for a quick bake, and... Sh it's right at this point that I realize that I done goofed. This entire time, I've been making Doctor Strange's recognizable blue sorcerer's robes. However, that's not what our undead doctor is wearing. No, he appears to be channeling his inner early 90s emo band look. Or better yet, he looks like he's straight up cosplaying a Renaissance Assassin's Creed character, Ezio Undead Torre, which means I need to control Z the last several hours of sculpting.
Finally, after a good bout of ugly crying, I can start rebuilding his upper body. And fortunately, I've got a secret weapon. Bacon Bond is basically a liquid clay that you can use as a glue between cured and uncured clay. So once I've covered the entire torso in Bacon Bond, I can slap on a thin layer of freshly grafted skin. Then it's just a case of adding those aforementioned layers, but this time sticking to the classic 15th century Italian assassin style. Finally, we're basically back to where we were several hours ago, but looking more like he's starring in a My Chemical Romance music video. However, this means his clothing is done, and I can finally give him some ears and hair. And a final bake in The Good Doctor is all but finished, which means it's time to add his multitude of spooky skeleton arms. I'll start by measuring the length for each arm, then using that to get seven more equal lengths of armature wire. Then I'll smoosh the last little bit of cosplay that I have lying around onto the arms and cut, pinch and roll until I have a tiny little skeletal hand. Then this little guy gets added to his seven other near identical friends and they get tossed into the oven. To attach the arms to the doctor's back, I'll smoosh some more clay into place and then just kind of stick the arms in so that they make for a beautiful, albeit somewhat somber flower. Then a very thin layer of clay over each of the wires will give them a bit of texture and I can add some extra bony bits connecting the hands to the arms. And for good measure I'll add a couple more spooky hands poking over the shoulders before adding some final blending on the back before we're on to the painting. Now I've primed the entire model white and I'll start by giving his face and hands a horrible jaundice yellow base coat. This will give me a nice unsettling undertone for all the subsequent layers as I add some purple bruising orange and brown scabs and scars, and a nice dark wash to highlight the cuts, cracks, and creases. Now I'm not sure if I like Doctor Strange as a dirty blonde, so I'll paint his facial hair black and then give him those patented Doctor Strange white highlights. Then it's time to add what little color the Doctor gets in the form of blood red underlay for his coat, the frilly shoulder pads, and his belt before I move on to the black. So much black. So much black, in fact, that I probably could have saved myself a hell of a lot of time if I just primed him black from the get-go. I didn't prime him black, though, so I haven't saved myself any time, which means I now need to paint every nook and cranny black. However, black is never really black anymore, so to add a bit of highlight to all the edges and make the detail stand out a bit more, I'll go over all the high spots with a dark blue or a dark gray. Then I can add some strategically placed dark red on some of the straps and lapels. And I'm also going to go over the brown scabby bits with a bit of red to make them stand out a little bit more. Otherwise, the doctor is finished, but he needs something to stand on. Now I considered making a massive black spooky smoke cape, just like the one he seems to be leaping out of in the trailer. But I thought at some point we have to accept that there's just too much black. And what little discernible detail there is, would be lost in the noise. However, I really like the idea of a spooky, ghostly something or other, so I'm gonna make some skulls and stick them together to make a swirly, smoky, rocky outcropping that he can jump off of. And once my spooky ghost rock has been baked, I can drill a hole down through the top of it, which will be my mount. And then I can paint the entire thing black before hitting it with a nice dark gray dry brush to highlight all the spooky edges. Then it's just a case of putting Steven in place 
and we're on to the glamour shots. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons that help keep this channel churning out questionable content every week. As well as a very special shout out to my newest patrons, Emma Hayes, Andrielsent, Gilby, Okami Hime, Melanie McCann, Kakoa Recruit, Robin Burb, David Brzee, Daydreamer Productions, Hoy Kex, Morgan Powers, Alina, McFlinnigan111, Iris Virus, and Elliot Doggo. You are the multitude of undone hands that hold up this zombified sorcerer of a channel. And hey, if you made it this far, then you may as well leave me a comment and hit that little subscription button, and then give yourself a pat on the back. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.